Hello everyone and welcome to the fifth part of the Google Agent Development Kit series for beginners. In the previous video, we actually looked at how to work with the structured output in the agents, which means that you can actually get specific JSON as an output from your agents. In this video, we are going to look at how we can maintain sessions within our agent development kit. And we're going to start looking at the ADK web to understand what a session is. You will notice that when you run ADK web, you see the session ID at the top and this is basically Basically, when a user starts chatting with the agent, it is bound within a particular session. When you refresh your application, the session is gone. You actually lose everything. But we could actually save that in a persistent storage as well. But that's not the scope of this video. In this video, we're actually discussing what session is. So when we talk about session, a session is essentially a conversation between the user and the agent and everything that happens within that conversation. So you will notice a couple of things here. First of all, we have the user asking a question which is the user input then we have a bunch of responses from models and there can be different models responding as agents to the user everything that happens within a conversation that is a user asking a question a response from the agent all of that is basically coming under something called event so these are events that happen within a particular session and we're going to expand on it a bit more if there are two different conversations going on from a user to the agent development kit then they are essentially maintained in two different sessions by default, when you start chatting with the agent, it creates a new session. Or if you already provide a session ID, then it would continue from there. Now let's have a look at something called state. When we talk about state, we are essentially talking about two things. We are talking about all the events that happen within the chat that becomes part of the state and also context or variables that we provide within the state as well. So it's possible to use the state. For example, you might have seen in the previous videos when an agent uses the output from another agent agent, we use these curly braces that define the variable names as well. And that is part of the state. So you can imagine this session having its own state and then this session having its own state. No two sessions usually share the state. The state is basically bound to the session itself. Now we are going to look into what a session does usually and what is a runner. Now let's say a user starts sending a message. It could be a new conversation. It could be an existing conversation. In the case of a new conversation, the runner essentially creates a new session. Then if it's a new chat, as I mentioned, there is a new session entry into the storage. Now there are different kinds of storage that we are going to discuss, but we are going to expand on them in a bit later videos. So let's say there is a new entry in the storage. And for this particular example, we are going to look at something called in memory session. And that is going to be served as the storage for our example in this video. And in memory session is just like this ADK web, because when you close the ADK web, this goes away. Way. or when you restart the application, when you restart your Python server, or when you run ADK web, it essentially loses all the chats that you have had before. And that is the in-memory storage. Now, let's say that the new chat is now entered into the storage. This essentially is confirmed back to the session service that the storage has a new entry now. So in both of the cases, if there's a new chat being created, or if there's an existing chat, the session data essentially comes back from the storage. So let's say you create a new chat, there's no session data. But if it's an existing chat, then from the storage, we will get the list of events state back to the session service. And this session service should give this back to the runner. Now the runner is the one that's actually making it work with the agent and with the storage or the session service. So the runner has the control in our case. When the runner gets the session object, it has all the details, the state events, all of that. Then it essentially provides the session object to the agent because the agent is supposed to answer the question that the user has asked. So this question essentially is supposed to be answered by the agent. So once we have the session object ready to the runner, it essentially goes to the agent with the message from the user, the state and the event history. All of that goes to the agent. The agent then uses the message, instructions, state, events, all of those things to basically generate a response or decide on a response. Once it does that, it essentially sends back or sends back the response back to the runner. So then the response is being held by the runner. The runner packages this response that came from the agent into an event. So the runner dispatches an event in that particular case. This particular event does a few things. First of all, it adds this event into the history. So the history of chat essentially gets this event appended. Then it also updates the state in the storage. So the storage already contained the state, the events from the history, but now it also contains this new event that just happened. Then it also updates the sessions last updated time. So you know when was 
the last message sent. So this is really important as well. Once this is done, the storage sends back a signal to session service that it's ready for the next chat or for the next message. And finally, the response is sent back to the user in this case. Now, let's say the conversation ends, the user decides to leave the chat in the cases where you have things like a customer support agent portal, etc. In that particular case, when the conversation restarts again or completely ends, in that case, the runner essentially deletes the session, which deletes the stored session data as well. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole flow of the session. Now, let's have a quick look at the example from the agent development kit. So when we talk about the session and the session object itself, as I mentioned, we can create a new session and we can use this in memory session service, which basically dies or when you restart your application, your data is lost. But this is still really good for prototyping or testing instead of actually using like a database or using a cloud provider like Vertex AI. In this case, when you create a new service, then you can use the service.create session to generate a session. It needs a few things. It needs the app name, the user ID and the state in which you can give a particular set of values. For example, any values that you want to be available to the agent as soon as a session starts. This could be the user's preferences. This could be system instructions. This could be certain values that the agent should know all the time. You can essentially create that in every session. Now that we have discussed about this, let's actually get into coding. So if you have not cloned the repository, of course, you need to clone the repository. And for this particular example, we have a branch. So if I do git branch, I should be able to see this five sessions and agents. So we need to check out to that. So do a git check out five sessions and agents. Once you do so, you should be good to follow along with this video. I'm going to quickly open this in my editor and we are going to create a new folder here. So we can quickly say five sessions and agents. Then I'm going to copy some files from my previous folders, which is the env file and then the init.py. So let's quickly copy those, paste it here. And in the environment variables, you can essentially look at the one marketing campaign agent to look at what this file should look like. In this case, we have the Google API key, we have the Gen AI model, and then we also have Gen AI use Vertex AI false. For this particular example, we are going to create a really simple agent. So you don't need the open AI key or cloud key, unlike we did in which we use multiple providers and also multiple large language models. In this one, it's going to be simple. So we're going to start with first creating an agent. So let's quickly go ahead and create an agent.python file here. We're going to quickly open it. And of course, you need to activate your Python environment. So if you have not done it, you can open a new console, say source, and you need to be at the root of the project. So here you can say venv bin activate. So it activates it. Then you can go ahead and run pip install or requirements.txt. I've already done that, but it doesn't hurt to do it again. Now we can go back to our code and start typing the agent. So first of all, we're going to start with import OS that we are going to go ahead and say from .env because we are going to use environment variables. So here we can load .env. We can quickly call this. Then we can say from google.adk.agents import agent. We're going to import the agent here. Then we can say root agent equals agent. And then we are going to give this name post agent. We're going to just give this some state variables and we are going to keep this agent simple. It's supposed to give us answers based on some state context. So I'm going to quickly give this a description that says an agent that knows some things about the user and their post preferences. Then I'm going to say that the model it's going to use is going to be os.environ.get. And here we can use Google underscore Gen AI underscore model, which is Google Gemini Flash 2.0. Then we can go ahead with the instruction here. And this is the instruction that we are using. We're saying you are a helpful assistant that can respond about the user and their post preferences. The information about the user and their post preferences is given in the state context. So I'm going to give it later in this video. And we are saying the name of the user is going to appear in this state variable. So this is going to be user underscore name and the post preferences is going to come under user underscore post underscore preferences. And that's pretty much it. This essentially makes our agent. And now we can quickly save this. Now we are going to create a new file. We are going to call this agent or we can say run underscore agent with session dot Python. Now we are going to actually run manually instead of using ADK web or agent. So we're going to start with importing. We can say from agent import root agent since we just created that. If you look at here and we go all the way here, you can see we have the root agent right here. Now we can quickly go ahead and import other things. So we can say from dot env import or actually we don't really need the dot env. So let's ignore this. We can say from Google dot adk dot runners import runner. Then we can say from Google dot adk dot sessions import in memory session service. Then we can say from Google dot import types. We are using this because we are going to create a message right here using these types. 
types. Now we can go ahead and create our session service. So we can say session service equals in memory session service. Now I'm going to give the state context. So here I can say state underscore context equals. And now here, the first thing is going to be the user underscore name. And here I'm going to give this SN. Then we are going to say user underscore post underscore preferences. And here I want to give it instructions similar to what I used in my LinkedIn post. For example, if I go to this tools agent or sorry, multimodal here and go to agent dot Python, I can see that in the LinkedIn agent in the instruction, I have specific instructions about how the post should be. For example, it should be professional, engaging, should have a primary hook, should have a line break, should have a post hook, etc. So I want to use something like this. So I'm going to go back to my file and I'm going to go to run agent with session pi. Now my instructions are as follows. I'm saying that for LinkedIn, we need to have a professional engaging and relevant to the topic post. It should also have a primary hook, not more than 60 characters, should have a line break, all of those things that we had. So feel free to pause this, copy this if you want, or you can find the code in the description, of course. Now what I'm going to do is let's quickly end this and we are going to end the state context variable here as well. I'm going to format this a bit nicely and now we can save this. Now that we have the state context ready, we can start creating our session. So for the session, we need a couple of things. We first need to use the create session method, but even before so, we need a couple of variables. The first one is going to be session ID and we can create a new ID here. So we can use the string function here, but we need to essentially go ahead and import UUID. So we can say import UUID and then here we can say UUID dot UUID four, just like this. Now we have a session ID. Then we can have a user ID and that's going to be my name. So I can say SNIS inside of using a UUID here. Then we have the app name and that's going to be social media post generator, just like this. Now that I have those, I can start with the app name, providing it, then the user ID, then the session ID. And finally, I want to provide the state as well. So here I can quickly go ahead state equals and here we can say state context just like this and then that's pretty much it so let's quickly save this now what i'm going to do is i'm going to print the session id so let's quickly do that the session id or actually it doesn't have a session underscore id it would rather have a session dot id here so let's use that then we go ahead and create a runner so here we can say runner equals runner and this is going to run our agent so here we can say agent is going to be root agent just like this the session service is going to be session service and the app name is going to be the app name and that's all the runner needs so let's quickly save this and now we can create a message or a question from the user to ask so here we can say something like user query or user underscore query and here we can say types dot content and in here we would have to provide role and i think that's going to be user then we have parts and the parts would contain a types dot part and in here we need a text i'm going to ask it a question that has an answer from the state itself so if you see the state here we have the username and the post preferences i want to ask what does the user want at the beginning of the post and if you see here it says that it should have a primary hook not more than 60 characters for linkedin and then it also has like a primary hook which grabs the attention of the audience for instagram right so here i can ask what does the user want at the beginning of the post and then that closes the part the array and then the content there we go now that we have this we can essentially say runner dot run and we can grab that and say for event in runner.run and we can pass the user underscore id we can pass the session id and then we can say new underscore message that is user query now and then we start coding about the type itself so here we say if the event dot is final response and this is something that adk gives us so if we have a final response here then we also check another thing if the event has a content property and event dot content dot parts is a thing then we essentially say the final response is event dot content dot parts zero the text so now that we have done this let's quickly go ahead and do something here first i'm going to save this and now i can say the session equals session service dot get session now that we have run the new message against the particular agent or the particular session so to say we want to get the session and see if the state variables exist still so we can check it by saying app underscore name equals to app name we're going to give the user id and we are going to give the session id as well so we kind of get the session just like this and then we can say print session state session dot state and before this happens i want a couple of line breaks so quickly add that and then i also 
want to just print out the key and values within the session. So here I can say for key value in session state dot items. And here we can say F key value. So we are just printing all these values. So I'm going to quickly save this now. And now we are ready to actually run it. So let's quickly go to the console here and make sure that you are in the folder itself. So you do CD five sessions and agents. Now I'm inside the folder and now I can simply run Python. And here I can say run agent with session pi. Again, as always, we are going to hope that it runs fine in the first time, but we never know. So I'm going to quickly run this. So we got the session ID and we got the responses, which means it ran for the first time correctly. Nice. Now you can see that here we have these key and values. So here we have the username and we got the user post preferences. This is coming from the state and this was the final output that we have gotten from this particular line. Now going back, if I scroll up, we should be able to see the whole session state right here. But then if I go even above, you can see the session ID and the final response. Here it says for LinkedIn post, the user wants a primary hook that is not more than 60 characters and is followed by a line break. For Instagram post, the user wants a primary hook that grabs the attention of the audience. So it's exactly giving us information from the state. And this is how you can maintain the state itself. And if your events end up creating more variables in the state, you should be able to access them as well. Just like before, we have seen in the ADK web that when an agent gives an output using an output key that is available to the other agents as state variables. And that is what we are doing here. So not only agents can create state variables or emit state variables, we ourselves can programmatically also introduce state variables in the whole agentic flow as well. And just to summarize before this video ends that the session service has multiple implementations possible. The first one is in memory session. That is something that we just use, which means that when your application restarts, the whole session is destroyed. There's no persistence and essentially you lose the whole chat. The other is database session service in which these sessions are stored in a particular database. You can even use a local SQLite file for this as well. Maybe we'll cover this in one of the coming videos if I found this important enough. And the third way is using the Vertex CI session service. And this allows you to store all of your sessions securely and being scalable on the cloud. So you can interact with Vertex CI via API calls when you do it this way. And of course, this is persisted on the cloud. So you don't really have to save them on your local machine and you can access them from anywhere. But with that said, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you like this series and you're learning a lot from it and you're following along as well, creating cool applications. If you are, let me know in the comments what kind of apps, what kind of agentic teams are you building with these series? And if there's something else that I missed in this particular topic, let me know in the comments. And if there's something that you want me to cover in the upcoming videos, let me know in the comments as well. Having said that, don't forget to smash the like button and share this video with others. That really helps the channel grow and motivates me to create further videos like this. As always, happy coding. I'm going to see you next time.